All right, so let's learn how to connect our Spring Boot application to our Postgres container. Um, hopefully, you guys are able to see this left piece. Uh, I've been trying to zoom it, but it's been really hard. Um, but I'm going to click into this application of properties, and you guys can see on the right, um, I already defined one property, which is server.port equals 8001. And honestly, this is not needed. You can leave it to the default, or like you don't need this line, but I need it because there's already a port using the default value of 8080 so I had to define another port so if there's nothing on your 8080 port then you can just leave it you don't need this line but if you want to ever change a port to another value this is the line to use now I'm just gonna copy and paste all the properties that you're gonna need for um, connecting with Postgres and I'm gonna explain what each line means but remember when I talked about the structure of our application, I said that application of properties, just as the name implies, are properties for the application. When you when we run the application, Spring Boot goes into here and pretty much checks like, okay, we have this, this, and that, right? And usually with those properties, it does specific actions. In this case, if we define properties for like a data source for Postgres, then it's gonna use those properties to connect um, to Postgres. And we can even define other properties like I sh just shown of, you know, changing the port to 8001 if you need to. So this is what we usually put our properties for our Spring Boot application in this application of properties. So let me just paste this in and you will see, okay, the first line defines, or let me just leave a space, but the first line is spring.datasource.url. And this is a JDBC URL. Now, what is JDBC? JDBC just stands for Java Database Connectivity, and it's just a API that allows Java programs to access database management systems. And in this case, that is just Postgres. Now, a JDBC URL just provides a way of identifying a database and recognizing how to connect to a specific database. So in this case, we see that the format is JDBC, a colon, defining the actual database or the um, management system that we're gonna use, which is Postgres SQL. And then we're defining where it's hosted, which in this case is localhost, and it's using port 5432, which when we cre when we created the container, we defined that the port is gonna be 5432. Now, if you use another port, then you would have to change this to whatever port that you defined. But since I use 5432 in creating the container, I exposed 5432, then I defined that port here. And then at the end, I just put a slash Postgres. Now, for the spring.datasource.username, it's just going to be the username that you used um, for the Postgres container. In, this in, in my case, when I created the container, I didn't define a username, so the default value was Postgres, so I just specified that here. For spring.datasource.password, it's just going to be the pass password of your Postgres container. And in the container that I created, I defined the password to be Postgres, so I used, this, probably used Postgres here. Now this last line is not necessarily uh, required from what I know, um, but I just put it anyway. It's just a driver class name. Now the driver class name just refers to the class name of the JDBC driver that we're gonna be using to communicate with our database. And the JDBC driver that we're gonna use is Postgres. So I just defined that. And how does it know um, that the, how does it know to use the JDBC driver of Postgres to connect? to Postgres or to communicate with Postgres? Well, we defined that in the palm.xml. When we created our project in Spring Initializer, we used or we added a dependency for Postgres. And that is the Postgres driver that will give our application the ability com to communicate with Postgres. So that dependency was needed. And you can see it here, dependency, and then you can see Postgres SQL. So really, that is really the only lines that you need to get Postgres connected um, to Spring Boot. And there is one more line that I want to show, which is this one. Let me just paste that in. Spring.jpa.hibernate.ddl-auto. And it is defined as create-drop. And this is just letting Spring Boot know that when we start our application, create all the tables, all the entities that we need. But when we stop our application, just drop it. Erase everything that was created when we first started our application all the tables that are in the Postgres um, database from when we started our application. So when we create our models and we start creating our, you know, our entities, so like we're going to create a to-do entity, which will define, will create a table uh, for to-do. 
and it's gonna include you know the name of this dude the description the progress boolean which is like whether the to do is finished or not all that is going to be defined when we start up our application but when we're done with our application that's all going to be destroyed that's all going to be dropped from the database so when we start our application again the, ta the table is going to be fresh with no information so you're probably asking why would i want that right well when we're testing locally i don't mind if things get dropped i just want an efficient way of you know erasing everything starting on a clean slate but obviously this line should be removed once you start going into production you don't want you know your users using your application and then when you redeploy your application it erases everything and now they have now everything that they have is missing right so this is a line that I usually use just for local testing uh, but you know it's really dependent on you you don't have to have this but that's just what I'm gonna have for this tutorial series but I just want to show you guys that it is an option if you want to use it so that is all you need to get your Spring Boot application connected to Postgres. In the next video, uh, we're going to go over how to create the to-do entity so we can get some data into our Postgres database. And we're going to create a repository as well so that we can create that communication um, to you know, start saving information to our database.